So hello and welcome to today's episode of Rockstar Histories. So as you're probably aware, in July 2021, Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive managed to anger the entire GTA modding community by sending Take Day notices to various mods. Some of these mods are well over 10 years old and were for pretty much every Grand Theft Auto out there. San Andreas, Vice City, whatever GTA, you name it, it had DMCA claims going for it. And while reading the various responses, many of which were outraged that the amount of time and effort these fans put into making these mods completely gone to waste due to their actions, it reminded me of an incident that occurred during the development of Manhunt 2, and an incredibly scummy incident that involved Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive and what they did to their own studio. So let's go all the way back to 2001, and Take-Two Interactive were busy buying up new studios to merge into their brand new Rockstar Games family, recently acquiring DMA Design, Alternative Realty Technologies and Angel Studios, and Take-Two Interactive eyed up a very small company called Neo Software Productions based in Vienna, Austria. And this studio was created by Hans Seifert and Nicky Labour, which was being sold by Gameplay.com to Take-Two Interactive in January 2001 for the grand total of one British pound. Not a thousand, not a million, not a hundred thousand, just one whole pound. And thus, Neo Software was now under the Take-Two Interactive umbrella. So much like newer acquisitions at the time, Neo Software was put down to work on very small projects while Take-Two were deciding on what they were going to do with them to get their money's worth. So Neo Software were put down to work alongside Remedy Entertainment for the original Xbox port of Max Payne 1, and they became a part of the Rockstar Games family and rebranded as Rockstar Vienna in 2003, where they then became much more involved in Rockstar Games projects, and became one of the largest development studios in Austria. Their work mostly consisted helping the conversions of Grand Theft Auto to Xbox, but sometime around 2004 to 2006, Rockstar Vienna finally got their own time to shine. They were put down to work on a sequel to Manhunt. So, as you might remember, in the PlayStation 2 era, Rockstar had every studio working on a specific IP. For example, Rockstar North were working on Grand Theft Auto, Rockstar Leeds were working on the GTA Story series for the PlayStation Portable, Rockstar Toronto were working on Warriors, Rockstar Vancouver were working on Bully, and San Diego were working on Red Dead. And that's one of the reasons why Vienna were handed the Manhunt franchise. And for quite a few years, the team at Rockstar Vienna were hard at work developing Manhunt 2, and all seemed to be going just fine and normal until the morning of Thursday, May 11, 2006. On that morning, many employees were going to work as normal, but when they pulled up to the Rockstar Vienna office, none of the employees were allowed in, and the entire office was guarded by security. Many employees were initially confused as to what was going on. Was there a break-in, or did something happen overnight to make the office a bit of a crime scene? As it turns out, no. Take-Two Interactive had ordered the complete closure of Rockstar Vienna without any single warning to the employees whatsoever. Nobody at the company knew about this closure except for the higher-ups at Take-Two, who claimed they were closing Rockstar Vienna due to a challenging environment and the pressure was severely impacting Take-Two financially. Now thankfully, due to Austrian law, all the employees were handed care packages and Take-Two did offer every employee at Rockstar Vienna a chance to come and work at any other Rockstar studio. But the problem with that is, that would require moving out of the country, as there were no other Rockstar studios in Austria, or Germany, or France, or Italy, the closest Rockstar studio was all the way in the United Kingdom. Other than that, their only other option was to move to the USA. And not many people would be in a financial position to just pack up and move countries after being kicked out of a job as it is, so understandably, Take-Two's offer was seen as quite insulting to many of Rockstar Vienna's employees. But this actually gets worse. Now, after the closure of Rockstar Vienna, Manhunt 2 was understandably moved over to Rockstar London, who would go on to make the final version of the game as we know it today with, of course, extremely controversial reviews due to its, at the time, incredibly gory and violent content. I'm sure we're all familiar with how controversial Manhunt 2 was. But, after Manhunt 2 released, Yuri Hornman, who was working on the level designs of Manhunt 2 at Rockstar Vienna, noticed something incredibly scummy. In the credits for Manhunt 2, every single mention of an employee who worked on Manhunt 2 under Rockstar Vienna was erased entirely. Not a single mention or homage was listed anywhere. It's like the original team never existed. Understandably, Hornman was furious at Rockstar for this, because he and his team spent years coming up with Manhunt 2, and he claims that while Rockstar London did make a few substantial changes and come up with their own original concepts, he definitely recognised his own team's work and ideas in the final product, and having all of that still remain in Manhunt 2, but not be credited at all, was almost like Rockstar pretended the original studio never existed whatsoever. And then Hornman went on to make his own Manhunt 2 credits post on his personal blog, even adding in at the bottom. I am disappointed and outraged that Rockstar Game tries to pretend that Rockstar Vienna and the work we did on Manhunt 2 never happened. The work of over 50 people who put years of their lives into this project trying to make the best game they could. I am proud to have been a part of that team. 
I'm sure someone somewhere is going to say that Rockstar Vienna was closed down due to our work on Manhunt 2 was of insufficient quality. This is something that cannot be proven one way or another, so all I will say is this was not the case. I do not want to denigrate what Rockstar London did with Manhunt 2, but as far as I can tell, the majority of the work we did at Rockstar Vienna is still in the release game. It's rearranged and it's modified, but it's all still there. And this little scandal made its way onto various gaming outlets and was met with a fair bit of sympathy for the Vienna team. But what actually came of this then? Did Rockstar take to apologise? Did they make an updated Manhunt 2 credits? You can probably guess the answer, no. Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive did absolutely nothing, they did not even acknowledge the scandal at all. But there was quite a bit of sympathy from other game developers, such as the International Game Developers Association who called the incident a perfect example of why crediting workers, even those who left during the project for whatever reason, should remain credited for what they did. Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive completely screwed over an entire studio twice for little to no reason, and it's still completely unknown if the erasure of the Vienna team's work was intentional, or if it was an accident, like, of course it would be very unlikely for anybody at Rockstar London to know anybody from Rockstar Vienna. But at the same time, it's very, very unlikely that anybody who worked on Manhunt 2 at Rockstar Vienna wouldn't have their work watermarked. And no, we don't actually get a happy ending with this, because as I say, history repeats itself, and for Hans and Nicky, it sadly did. After the closure of Rockstar Vienna in May 2006, Hans and Nicky made another gaming company called Games That Matter Productions which was mostly finalised in January 2007 and consisted mostly of former ex-Rockstar Vienna employees. But, in August 2007, they were acquired by Koch Media. They were merged into Deep Silver and rebranded as Deep Silver Vienna. They only ever published one title called Curse Mountain, and in 2008 they were told they were going to be working on a brand new game. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Deep Silver, 2008? That's gotta be Saints Row 2. You know it's actually Ride to Hell Retribution. Yes, I'm being serious, it is actually Ride to Hell Retribution. However, development was incredibly awful to the point Nicky and Hans both left the studio in December 2009 and Deep Silver Vienna met the same fate as they did when they were under Rockstar's wing. The studio was shut down in January 2010 and for the third time, another successor to the studio was created in May 2010 called Social Spiel, which closed its doors in 2017. But that's a story behind Manhunt 2 you probably didn't know. Personally, I think it's a fine example of how the common worker would always get shafted in as many ways possible, and also a point that Rockstar and Take-Two weren't as good as we remember even back in the PS2 era. Even if their titles were better and Rockstar games were a bit more fan-friendly, I'm speaking internally. Internally, they're still probably a pretty scummy company too. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to subscribe for, well, more videos like this, or bully content, depending on how I feel. But thank you for watching today's video and have a great day.